Hello there guys, so I hope you had a very happy equinox. Spring in the northern hemisphere and autumn, you lucky devils, in the southern hemisphere. So I was going to record this altar yesterday, which was on the actual equinox. But uh, the <laughs> drilling outside took a whole new level yesterday and I was actually on Skype and people could hear it in the day, like full on hear it. So I was like, that's no good. And it started at 8 a.m. It didn't finish until 5.30 p.m. And then I had an interview with the lovely Miss Arwen. And you can check that out over on her channel. So I thought what I would do is in the early morning rays, we've got some gorgeous sunlight diffusing through here right now, is show you guys uh, the spring equinox three-tiered altar that I worked with yesterday. And I'm going to continue to do some work today because it didn't get half of what I wanted to do yesterday done. Um, because of the noise, basically. So I did manage to go for a little walk and have a little meditation yesterday. And there was this gorgeous, soft, feathery rain yesterday. And it was very, very fine and misty. And there was kind of like this whole mist theme going on yesterday. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the altars, talk through it. Well, it's one altar, but we're kind of like three-tiering it because we have the radiator and the uh, windowsill above. And talk a little bit about messages from the autumn equinox. So, I think we'll start by just showing you guys the altar. I think that makes the most sense. So, again... I also have my drum here from Miss Laura Dalligan. Oh, doesn't it look amazing with the light going through? And I did some drumming yesterday and some singing and listening to, I don't know how to pronounce it, it's Ivor, Ivor, um, that Chris introduced me to and I've been listening to it non-stop since she did and I've been like, oh, it's so good, it's so amazing. So down here we have a soundbar for cleansing and then the little altar so I suppose I should should have said right at the beginning and as a pre-warning there are feathers and bones on this altar and I will probably put that in the down bar thinking about it okay so this is the main working altar space if you like which is separate from the Morrigan altars we're now basically both hers up there and I have the lovely witchy cloth back on here. I've kind of been alternating between this and the grey one but I felt really that I wanted the the black and whites very very present for the equinox for a couple of reasons, um, some that will become clear in a moment but I like the energy of the balance between light and dark and then we shift into the light half of the year. I always love that about the equinoxes. I love the moment of pure balance between light and dark before one takes over again. I like that shifting and that thought process and that sort of symbology. So there's a lot of black and white throughout the altar and that will be why. I have the swan feather here. This is was a gift and the swan feather is used all the time for cleansing and healing work and it's obviously got a connection with Brigid and it works really really well for that as well as expression which is a lot of what came through oh crow overhead I wish I'd have moved the camera quick I might have got him <laughs> the crows the crows are like hi you missed us bah, 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 bah. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so for, for creative expression. Over here is a new taper candle that I made and I uh, created a triskel on it and uh, that one's not particularly perfect but it was for me so I wasn't stressing too much about it. And is that the only triskel on here? It's the only triskel on here but I was working with a triskel yesterday for the cycles of life. Beginnings, endings, and everything in between, which is wonderful for spring. And then we have kind of like the little elevated mini wooden altar, which you've seen before. If you've been on my channel, I made a whole big deal. I was like, look what I found, because I'm like that. And then on the inner circle, 
We are a circle within a circle. The table's not a circle, but we will say it is. Anyway. <laughs> Right, I always end up doing some weird singing in these videos. I have no idea why. Just, you know, welcome to the madness. So, within this circle, within a circle, within a circle, within a circle, there are loads of circles in here. Um, there are life and death elements. So, in the very, very centre is a black obsidian orb, which I love. And I always think about it as being like a crow eye, like eye of the Morrigan, like mmm. And then we have uh, my Nyx Turner plaque, if you like. Uh, it's called Lunar Roots, and it has birch roots. It's a birch plaque, and it has the, the moon symbols, which I often think about as being more dark moon symbols. And then, like, the circle is the um, full moon, so it kind of embodies both to me. And I kind of like having the roots, and I kind of upturned it. So it's the other way up. So it's like the roots are going upwards. Hi Ladybird. You know I said I was surrounded by I don't know whether people have know this. I'm still surrounded by ladybirds and there's one flying around on the window. So if you hear a little it's a ladybird. I'll see if I can zoom in. Can you see? There look, I'm not crazy. <laughs> well I am, but there are ladybirds there. Right. So the roots are upturned on the Nix Turner for growth. So rather than going down into the underworld, into the dark half of the year, we're going upwards into the light half of the year. Boo! <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm an I'm a underworld, dark half of the year kind of girl. And where I love spring, I'm not a fan of summer. So <laughs> I'll just be going to the other side of the world now, just to go, go sit in there autumn until it's time again. Anyway, so we have a quartz here, and then surrounding we have... Labradorite and the little ones and then terminate, terminated quartz uh, for the balance. So terminated quartz has energies of tourmaline. There they are, look, I got him, I got him, I got him. Oh, I was quick enough, yes. <laughs> just so you know, I, I, I do see crows. I'm not just like, there are crows and then Anyway, uh, so terminated quartz has energies of tourmaline, it has a grounding presence, it has a shielding presence, and then it has quartz, which is an elevation presence, so which really sort of Duracell bunnies everything around it. And I like that, I like the, the balance, because we are on an equinox altar. On either side we have one of the sugar skulls, which were presents uh, from a swap from Wendy. I have a couple left, and I have saved this couple um, for work to do with the equinox for bringing goodness, attraction, magic from spring onwards for growth, making that growth positive and, and positive change and things, which I was going to do yesterday, but I didn't get around to it because of noise. And then here we have a crow skull. This is an actual skull. Um, on the top are two resin ones. This is an actual skull. This is the only one that's happy to be on camera. This is the chatty skull. <laughs> this one doesn't mind being on show. The other ones uh, I've been told and don't want to be and they have a secrecy to them. So there you go. And, and a crow foot. And then in the cauldron in the back here we have magpie feathers. And here is going to be another theme. So I will show you all of the magpie references and then we're going to talk about why magpies were important. We'll just finish off this, this bottom section here with saying we have the moth from the, the moth picture which came with the flower of the night oracle which is this. This is what I was talking about yesterday with Arwen and I meant to have them next to me to show them off and I actually did a reading with them yesterday and I'm going to take a picture and upload it to the blog ASAP so because I thought it was really wonderful it was like a message of renewal and hope it was lovely and then I have the as above so below art print at the back there again and then we have another magpie and that's from Wild Spirit Weaver she's done I have three of her pieces I believe the magpie was tailor made for me Yes, it was. It was the magpie that was tailor-made for me. And so that's right in the centre there with kind of the little cloak and then the little doodads as well as the unicorn that Molly sent me, remembering that you are a goddamn unicorn. And then 
the, the print is over there for uh, being carried by the, the crow's familiar. Right, so magpies, and I saw a whole host of magpies yesterday, and I was like, good, we're along the right lines. And there are magpie feathers in the, in the cauldron, like, stood up. Right, so magpies are about creative expression and communication. The chatter of the magpie is a symbolic message that we need to speak our minds, speak up, express our opinions, be creative, especially with our creative and spoken words. We have to keep an eye on our priorities, making sure we are chasing after suitable desires and are not putting materialism ahead of matters of the soul. Magpie can also ask us about levels of spiritual perception to keep an open mind in matters of the spirit. She asks us where our spiritual foundation is and encourages us, encourages us to open the gateways of higher vision. Reminds us to reveal our brilliance to the world. And just when we are getting to know the symbolic meaning of the magpie, she eludes us and leaves us guessing what she's all about. They can be shy and reclusive, yet in cities they can be incredibly sociable. The oddities in the behaviour are symbolic of illusion and perception. The magpie's message is not all things are what they appear to be, and we should not set our judgments in stone. Further, the magpie messages us to show that we should not be bound to perceptions. Uh, so she can be used for predicting omens, divinations, and so on and so forth. Um, and the, the divinational saying, one for sorrow, two for joy, three for girl, four for a boy, I was always taught was magpies, not crows. So every time I see it saying it's on crows online, I'm like, mm, is it though? Like, in the Old English here, we always learnt it was magpies, so. So, there is the duality within the magpie as well, of course, the black and white. And then, the flash of green. And they can be very chatty and very social, but they can be very reclusive and very shy. Um, but there's this wonderful illusion perception thing that goes on that really spoke to me this uh, this equinox. And I've talked in the Nature Warrior video about this is very much about seeds of the future and refusing to be perceived as, in that video we talked about dandelions and weeds, and when, you know, I talked about the fact that, you know, we are not weeds, we are useful and helpful, and just because someone cannot perceive our usefulness doesn't mean that it isn't there, and therefore not allowing others to dictate to us who we are, but rather finding a higher truth within ourselves and sticking firm to that, especially in a time, in a culture which is, is beginning to try and become more and more divisional, more and more uh, hostile and it, standing for what you believe in and from a place of peace and a place of unity and a place of standing by brothers and sisters who are coming under attack becomes more and more and more important and therefore we, this equinox again had this kind of mist and shroud and perception and I've talked about how I feel like underworld energies in particular always shift and change and move when you're engaging with them. And it can be easy when you're in a spring mode to be like, oh, we're focusing above world and we're focusing on the flowers and we're focusing on the bunnies. And this year that felt so wrong for me on so many levels that it became very much about bones and flowers, that the element of death was omnipresent. And it was very much about, remember that seeds to grow, to blossom, they have to force themselves through the ground, they have to crack open and it's a painful process. Birth is not an easy process and that's okay, that's part of, part of life is growing pains are expected and we can just push on through and keep growing and keep being who we are and push past the perception that you know spring and equinox has to be all sweetness and light and it can have sweetness and light and that's cool and that's good and we take that on board as well but it can also have the duality and that's really what the messages were for for me this spring equinox so we'll just finish up and set show what's up top we had a shift around a little bit and we have the crow and the light's going to be crazy up here because we're in first 
thing of the morning, so I will try and top down a little image that Molly sent, and the Morgan statuette. I put the Witch Gang uh, <laughs> patch there from the spooky box because I thought it looked cool against the candles. Uh, the moth that Molly sent me is in the centre this time. If you have a look on the blog, there was a poem that felt very indicative of where I was at this spring, spring equinox and it had moth imagery within it so therefore the moth and the magpie are kind of centre stage here. Down here is the little cosmic dryad and little fox that I was sent as a gift and the two resin skulls, the cosmic one and the darker one. <clears throat> the, they were actually both gifts as well I realised, the um, resin skulls and the two little crow votive holders that were a gift from Miss Ember. So that was awesome. And then over there is the Nevermore. Nevermore. Uh, I'm sorry if you could... Out here is all the building works against... That's where all the building work is, right there. So <laughs> there you go. And then down here we have the Morrigan statuette that was also a gift from my dear friend Sharon. And down here we have the unicorn offering focus dish, if you like. And we have a hagstone, we have shells, we have... Crab claw, we have some snake skin, we have some graveyard dirt from a friend from Wales, which if uh, you know me, then half of my family are from Wales, a family tradition, roots of the earth style energy to it, which is nice to bring into Equinox as well. And then a little crow plaque from Everin, and I think that's it. There you go. I'll come back down here again though, because the light is a bit grey up there. Because it's first thing in the morning, it's very cleansing here. I was like, oh. So I hope you guys had an amazing equinox. I'm sorry this video is a day late, but I've managed to get it done in the wee, the very, very, very early hours of um, the next day. So before there's any noise, before there's any noise, apart from me singing silly songs. So I hope you guys had a wonderful equinox and many blessings.